Let's try this again, folks. Welcome to another episode of Watching Paint Dry here on Another Letdown. My name is Zach from Another Letdown Media and the This Is Difficult video game podcast currently on hiatus. And I'll be your, one of your hosts this evening. Watching Paint Dry is the show where we hang out long after we should have thought about going to bed on a Saturday night and work through the ridiculous backlog of miniatures that we keep accumulating through various means, either by purchase or 3D print or... Or, or what have you. I mean, there's 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 ways of getting miniatures. Uh, people commission us even like, blah. We, miniatures coming from everywhere. It's it's a nightmare. Even, there's an old adage that says if a miniatures painter ever runs out of projects to paint, he or she will perish. So that's, well, that's just not acceptable to us. We're just trying to stave off death for as long as possible. Joining me on the line, as always, it's our resident monkey handler, Broody Gambit. Mike, how's it going? Uh, it's going great. Glad to be here. You sound after last week's off. Yes, for yeah, yes, yes. We apologize for last week off. Uh, Mike was working and I was otherwise engaged um, with with Prouty nonsense. We we raised we raised a lot of money. It was it was crazy. Um, but dude, you sound you sound wonderful. Thank you. I had we, some work done. <laughs> or by that you mean you took advantage of Amazon Prime days and yes. did some work. Yes. So Mike has a new mic. And uh, and he sounds and he sounds better than ever. So that's uh, that's wonderful. Um, as with all the shows that we host here on the channel, we believe in civil rights for absolutely everyone and in being as inclusive as possible. So any comments or activity actively working against that goal are not welcome and will not be tolerated. Uh, let's paint. Uh, I am working on. I'm continuing to work on Red Hood, uh, and you are working on the coolest Jedi ever. It's Plo Koon. Yes, it is the coolest Jedi. It's my favorite. Yeah, he's mine as well. Really, really like Plo Koon quite a lot. Um, Someone asked me yesterday what, like, my favorite non-Jedi character was that couldn't be, like, main, you know, like, like Han Solo or, or whatever. I didn't have any difficulty coming up with an answer. But I'd mm -hmm. like to hear yours before I give mine. The f my favorite character that's non-Jedi. Non like, main, non-main, non-Jedi. Um, I would and it can have... be from EU. It can can be from EU. That's a tough one. Um, it, adding right? EU. Although, um, I think uh, pretty solidly, it would fall down to Captain Rex. Oh, good answer! Really good answer. Man, that is a, wow! Like, I don't even think you need the qualifiers uh, for me to say like uh, Captain Rex is easily up there, if not one maybe two that's that is that is a strong strong answer i i would not have even considered captain rex but i totally get it that is a great answer mm -hmm. what about you i went with tycho selchu yes he is he's he's definitely up there i do and uh he's really awesome especially like the rogue one books and stuff he was great. yes um i i love his his brief appearance in return of the jedi um, mm -hmm. very fond of that, but as also like, huh? As green leader. Yes. As green leader. Um, and, but I love, you know, the, the visual connection there, um, between, uh, to, to, or to, like, he's so awesome in the rogue squadron books. Like, I love being able to say, oh yeah, that's that guy. Mm-hmm. And personally, I actually really liked him in X-Wing, like yes. the uh, miniatures game. Yes. This character yes. was really unique, and I enjoyed playing him a lot. Yes, he was very cool in X-Wing. Um, I wish, like, you know, justice for Tycho, like, I wish I wish he uh, was more well-known in, in uh, other facets, but, like, he's he's definitely, he's definitely earned his stripes, you know? Most definitely. Uh, I also considered... Um, oh, hey! Dude, hey, uh, Greg, uh, yes. So, I still haven't beat Metroid Prime Remastered. <laughs> I'm stuck on the final boss, mostly because I just don't have time to do it. Um, but I'm very excited about Metroid Prime 4. As a giant Metroid door. Yeah, I'm very excited. Um, I almost considered uh, Wes Jansen purely for the yub yub commander jokes uh, 
I loved that that bit where he tried to convince Wedge Antilles that there was an Ewok pilot. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was pretty pretty awesome. Uh, that's not the color I wanted. Come on. Just wanted up way too blue. Or did it? Yeah, it did. Okay. Well, more purple it is. I'm doing some blending. Uh, one of my goals at Gen Con coming up in two weeks. So two weeks from now, we will be off. Uh, it's worth noting yes. because I will be at Gen Con um, with Adam and Greg and Jacqueline and Alex and the crew. Sadly, not me. Sadly, not Mike, uh, which which is a genuine shame. I mean, we love, we love working with you. Hopefully, we'll see you at uh, PAX Unplugged. I will see if I can make it work. That that would be that would be pretty dope. Two weeks, Greg. Two weeks. Two weeks from today. Two weeks from today, you and I will have seen Coheed and Cambria together from the front row. Like, that's pretty cool. During Gen Con, <laughs> like that is almost absolutely unheard of. Is is what that is. There we go. That's the right color. Okay, we're in. The so I'm working on edge highlighting uh, Red Hood. There's really not a whole lot left to go on this mini. The, it was one of those simple ones where just everything fell into place. Mm -hmm. And uh, you really just don't need to do a whole lot. I've been painting dice all week, which is a miserable experience. Don't do that. Painting dice? Dice, yeah. Why do you need to paint dice? Uh, oh, you can't talk about yeah, it. Yeah, okay. you you know the reason. Greg knows the reason. I can't talk about it publicly. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's an exciting time. Mm -hmm. I got all the files for that printed this week, and I'm very excited about it. That's really cool. Yeah. Um. But, yeah. So, yeah, Gen Con in two weeks. Uh, we'll, we'll be off. But gosh darn it, we intend to paint in the meantime. I don't know about you, but I am going to see Deadpool and Wolverine on Thursday. I'm very excited about that. Is it, is it this week, really? It sure is. That snuck up on me. Yeah, right? I mean, yeah, I don't I mean, have tickets, and I, I'm not probably going to go right away to see it, but... I don't blame you. Like... I think the only real reason that, like, I don't really watch movies in the theater anymore. It's just not my thing. Um, mm -hmm. And, and you know, thank you, COVID-19 pandemic for, uh, am I allowed to say that on YouTube now? Um, for, for teaching me that. Like, I, I genuinely, like, that is, well, we, oh, we have, we have, we have, we have an animation for that. We call that learning and growing. Um, and, but, you know, my, my, two of my best friends, uh, called me up and were like, Hey, you know, we're going to get tickets. Like, let's go, let's go together like old times. And I was like, you know what? Sure. I'll, I'll go. Um, so yeah, we're going to see, we're going to see Deadpool and Wolverine together. And I'm, I'm, I'm into it. Like, I'm excited about it. Taking a day off of work. That to say, taking like what Friday off of work so you can be out late. No Thursday. I'm just take calling out Thursday. I'll I'll be it. Friday's uh, just like the last day of summer school, so it's there's really not a whole lot going on. Mm -hmm. um, this so yesterday we had um, a beach day at summer school. It was it was pretty awesome. Um, my my student sadly was uh, was absent, but I mean to be fair to his credit, he was hanging out with his dad, which is that's a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I got to hang out with another student instead, and that was that was pretty awesome. Of course, my my shoulders are feeling it today because I was I had kids jumping off my shoulders all day. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, worth absolutely worth. And then tomorrow is my daughter's second birthday. Yay! Which is very cool. Somehow or another, 
we've made it this far. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it's good. And, um, yeah, so this this week we're going to sort of a local uh, amusement area. It's not really a, not really a park per se, just a, kind of a local experience, I guess. Oh, whoa, that's way too white. Oh, nice. Nice little gray. Oh, yes. Oh, when edge highlighting comes out right. You know, some of these Gotham City Chronicles minis, as, as, as much as I poop on them and, like, buyer's regret, some of them come out really, really nicely. Oh, uh, so I just got tickets this morning, or this afternoon, to see uh, The Room in theaters. Again? Again, but this time it's going to be hosted by Greg Sestero, so hoping to get my copy of The Disaster Artist autographed. That would be pretty rad. That to say, I should get my copy of The Room autographed, because I already have Tommy Wiseau's autograph. I don't know. That's gonna be it. That's gonna. That's gonna. That's gonna require some thought. Things you never expected to have to say. Um, gosh, I love this wet palette. Just allowing me to do so many different shades of the same like color. So you asked me to find the, what was it, the promo pack for, uh... Star Wars Unlimited. Star Wars Unlimited at Gen Con. I will, I will do my best. Uh, I've talked to several of my regular operatives. I will dispatch mm -hmm. them as necessary. Obviously, I am very much pinned to the booth, uh, most yeah. of the time, so... But, uh, I, I will, I will do what I can for you. Yeah, there, um... It's like they have like six characters. Oh wow, that's not small. Yeah, it's like it's like six promo cards. Um, two from, maybe three from the first set. Um, and then like one, it's like Emperor Palpatine, Darth Vader, Count Dooku, Kylo Ren. Oh wow. Uh, which Kylo Ren is the second set. The first three were from the first set. Uh, and then they're adding in Asajj Ventress and Darth Maul from set three, which won't come out for like another several months. Oh, damn. Okay. So it's like those three characters can't be used, uh, like obviously in competitive play until like the full set drops, but. Right, but you, you know. You get some like very pretty. Uh, like alternate art cards and stuff like that. Yeah. And like most promo stuff from Fantasy Flight, it is just like alternate art. It's not like yeah. exclusive stuff that's like. I've always game really changing. respected that about Fantasy Flight. Like. Yeah. They understand the second market. And they've, they've done a number of things to try and like figure that out, to sort through that. But the reality is they. they They've they've learned. Oh, I really what we really need to be doing here is just, um, just alt art because you know it, that that way you're not precluding people from playing your game. Yeah. Um. But the art looks great. Um, 
Yeah, one of the things, like, Astonish Adventures actually has a new keyword on her um, that they haven't, like, explained what it does. So even if you tried to play with her, you, you, wouldn't, like, it wouldn't, to. you wouldn't know what to do with her. That's hilarious. What a good way of doing it, honestly. And irritating, I suppose, because, like, you there's there's always the risk that we end up with a, what was it, Gloria Goldberg case, where we get the promo and we're like, ah, uh, we have gone three sets now and we still haven't seen her. It's been a lot more than three sets. I know, I just picked a number out of my hat. Oh, yeah. But it's like Norman Withers was like one of the first, like maybe even the second novella. Yeah, he was early. And that was like after Carcosa and it wasn't until Edge of the Earth, which was like set seven. Yeah, it was. It was Before late. he came out. It was late. Like Silas was a later book, and, but and an earlier because um, he was an in Innsmith and that was only like six. But by the time his novella came out, it, like they were already like, you maybe waited like two sets for him instead of it already being out, like with Roland and Jenny and yeah. So. Uh, you are you are getting uh, greeted by Antiverst. Uh, that's M from G U D and D. Oh, nice. Hello, Antiverst. Welcome to the channel. Which M? No idea. Um. We always ask new people, who is your favorite Batman villain and why is it the Riddler? Uh, oh, yes. Okay, hold on. The player. LOL. The player. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Hood. Yeah. Oh, that is very pink. That is not one before. There we go. That's better. All right, cool. So my team, uh, the final total for the Proudy. I've been going on about that. Oh, favorite Batman villain is probably Riddler, and is one hundred percent of Jim Carrey. Yes, yes, one of us. Antiverse, you are very welcome here. I. I'm right there with you. Absolutely. I'm not saying it was the best performance of the Riddler, but it's definitely what would turn me on to the Riddler. boots in the same color. I watched that movie so gosh darn many times before I realized that it was not an accurate depiction of any of the characters involved. Um, no. But I really, I, I do love it. I unironically love that movie. Uh, much as I love Daredevil, like with Ben Affleck, I... The, the director's cut is phenomenal. I re recently rewatched it in preparation for Deadpool 3. Uh, and I, I watched Electra last night and had, by the, the, the film ended, I was like, what, what, what just happened here? <laughs> like, I have actually no idea. <laughs> was there even a plot? I don't know. Um, speaking of Batman Forever. Yep. Did you, uh, like, I'm assuming everyone had these at some point in time. The McDonald's glass cups. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I had that. That shows up on my, like, Facebook marketplace an inordinate amount of times. Like, Dude, it's absurd. right? I'm Holy like, moly. such a niche item. It's amazing. Those are the Garfield ones or the other ones. I see the Garfield ones all the freaking time. Like, where are the Star Trek ones that I'm, I've, I've got... Lieutenant oh, the ones for working? Yeah. Uh, no, the Garfield ones from uh, McDonald's, I believe. But, uh, like, I had the full set of Star Trek glasses, and they've all broken, except for the Lieutenant Zagora. Oh, uh -huh. thank you for the new... Thank you for the follow, Andy first. Much appreciated.
shout out to 4G's for the animation there. It's been a while since I've shouted Colin out. He's a great guy. Streamer in his own right. Although he mostly plays Phasmophobia, so as <laughs> much as he is my boy and, you know, I, I care about him a lot, I don't watch his stuff. To be fair, like, I don't really watch streams anymore because mm -hmm. I am a dad. I have dad things to do. <laughs> I'll watch, like, replays of Metroid Speedrunners when <laughs> I cook, but... That's because I know the game so gosh darn well that uh, I kind of play it in my sleep, so. Recently brought my, my time way down. Or, no, sorry. I shouldn't say that. I brought my percentage down. Um, approaching any percent levels. Nowhere near it, but. Just trying to improve. Try trying to improve my game. Lord Yeshua so really wants me to uh, actually put a time on the board, and I, quite frankly, I, I'm not particularly motivated to do that. Mostly, I'm just looking to be able to play Met Super Metroid blindfolded speed. Yeah, hardy har, Greg, go to bed. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not ready for a blindfolded run. So, what do you mean by like brought your percentages down? Um, like how item how... percent? Item collection percent. So you're like talking about like being able to beat the game without getting all of the upgrades and yes, stuff? Yes, exactly. Like, trying to get routing down, trying to figure out what's necessary and what's not. Uh, I, like, part of my fascination with Metroid is exactly that. Like, what can I kind of get away with? Um, so I just beat Axiom Verge yesterday, and I 100%. Mm -hmm. But I immediately was like, okay, I recognize, you know, 10 to 12 things that I definitely don't need. Remote error was there. Like, there were... Remote error even, even said, like, flamethrower for the win. If I can get through the game and just get the flamethrower, that's all I need. So, what what is that for Metroid? Like, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. And, I mean, speedrunners definitely have it optimized to very minimal. Um... You know, oats and goats can do it. In, yes, I died 69 times. That's true. I, I died. I died 69 deaths. Nice. There it is. Thank you. Um, but it was a great game. Like we we really enjoyed it. Um, but like oats and goats has has Super Metroid down to like 40 odd minutes, 42 minutes or something like that. Some stupid. And um, so like. What, I don't know what what is what does that mean? What is what can I get rid of? What do I actually need or not need? Um, and so that's kind of where I'm at. I was like just just a thinking game. This may well be my best cloak. If I don't screw it up. I thought Thor was just perennially gonna be my best. But this is this is actually really good. I did receive a, a new commission this week. That's good. Yeah. For Game Boy or for like a painting? For or? painting. Uh well actually both. Um I've got a Game Boy, a DS, and a Nintendo to do for our friend Daryl. Mm -hmm. uh, and Russ asked me to do a Tarask based on the Tarask that Alex and I did years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we will see how that plays out. Uh, unfortunately, the model's not ready yet, so uh, it's hard to hard to do pricing. Yeah, because I need to know. Like, I might give him a flat rate and just be like, "This, this is, this is what it's going to cost." For me to even like look at this, 
Which sounds really stingy and, and, and rude, but like that's kind of how we have to operate. Like, it's all a juxtaposition of, of, of our of our available time and uh, you know what we can and can't do. What has happened here? The music is still playing, oddly, but I don't hear it. In other news, there is a new Kickstarter for Elder Dice. I don't know if you saw that. I did see that post this week, yeah, for um, like uh, Mountains of Madness and yes. I forget the other two. Uh, Reanimator and Innsmouth, I think? And yeah, I think I am, it was Innsmouth. I am very excited about the Innsmouth ones. The Mountains of Madness ones look very cool, and I wanted to be excited about the Reanimator ones, and the reality was I was disappointed. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted them to be... They're, they're kind of just gross. Which I guess I don't know what I was expecting. But they're they're a little too gross for me. Uh, which is good, because it, it limits how much I'm actually spending on these. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the, the Innsmouth ones are very cool. Yeah, they have enough of your money. Yeah, well, Greg, you bought in on the uh, uh, one-up dice too, didn't you? Yeah. So yeah, they they have quite a bit of your money, and I mean, to be fair, this whole bag is full of elder dice, as are my what six? No, oh dear, nine grimoires mm -hmm. that people have given me over the years. Like that's a lot of grimoires. Yeah. So genuine. Well, okay. So hold on, I'll I'll go get them because they're kind of cool. Yeah, I've got. Let's see, I, I think their first one I got th three boxes for myself and two as gifts. Yeah, so these... these. Uh, so I'm currently using the Cthulhu ones with my yeah. Wednesday D&D game. Oh, nice. And I'm using my Dagon ones with my Monday D&D game. Yeah, so I've got, I've got nine grimoires. Um... Like as I just put it on the screen, but um, I, I think of the nine, like six were given to me by various people. Like I, I ran a, a super, uh, excuse me, Sentinels RPG game, game, and like the players just like bought me three sets, and I was like, oh, oh, okay, <laughs> fine. That's I, weird. It is because like. Like getting getting the gift is not what. Sorry, uh, what I, those elder die the way the dice are like numbered out, like don't match well with yeah sentinels. Right. Yeah. So that's like that's why I have this bag. This bag is full of sentinels dice. Like mm -hmm. I I just custom built elder dice sets out of the their booster packs or whatever, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do with this new Kickstarter. Is like I'm just gonna buy booster packs for the ones I care about, and I really don't care. Uh, yeah, they come with extra D6s and a D20. So for D&D, &D, like, and, and this, this and is And I problem. guess there was like, a pack that came with the extra D10s and D4s. Right. So for D&D, for &D, like, this this is my set. This, this, I always use, come on, open up. These. These are my metal Slytherin dice that were given to me by my, uh, my, 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 my in-laws for Christmas mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, and then... I, I bought the Wormwood box for them because it was cool and it was on sale. Um, actually, I think Greg might have bullied me into doing it, but um, or maybe Jacqueline. It was probably more likely Jacqueline. Um, so those are those are my D and D dice, and I always use them for Call of Cthulhu. Like I have, I think Jetpack Comics dice actually that are that are percentile, and those are my Call of Cthulhu dice. So I really don't need the elder dice for and, and then they end up just sitting there and I'm like ah, that's frustrating I don't like buying things that just sit there yeah um, says the guy who has you know nine game boys behind him but like they, they serve a purpose you know I'm selling them. I'm, I'm, I'm planning to restore and sell those as as people need them
And I think that's part of what bugs me about my board game collection in general, is like... <laughs> Greg has a mandatory rotation. Of course you do. But the other problem is I'm not playing games right now. I'm not... I'm not... I'm not, I'm not playing RPGs right now. Uh, you know, I'm lucky if I get to play Ark of Horror once in a while. Uh, card game or RPG or other... Uh, card game... Uh, second edition or otherwise like I just oh my. I'm not playing games I, I have a hilarious story about my Arkham Horror game today oh boy so sorry I, I'll, I'll let you, you can finish your uh, whatever oh uh, I was you just saying like about. I you know this Gen Con is going to be weird because I know I'm not playing games mm -hmm. and last year I left with a bunch of games that are still sealed behind my green screen. Like, there's nothing... I haven't even opened them. One of them I bought because my my digital arts professor, who I love, uh, made it. And I will buy his next game as well. Um, but... That's... You know, at least at least two others were just like, I, I, why did I buy this again? I don't know. It's silly. So anyway, with Arkham, we're running through Circle and Dumb. Okay. A great um, classic. I don't know. Uh, the story's fine for that one. I, I did not like playing it because I feel like the levels are too swingy. There's a lot of like randomization in the setup that can either make, if you get unlucky, like on a bell curve, like it evens out. But any given game, you could be like, it is literally impossible because you do not have enough actions to complete the objectives. Um, yeah. Or I, it can be actually, incredibly I easy. Of, um, well, I was thinking of... Uh, just not just like this. Uh, Forgotten Age. I was thinking Forgotten Age. Oh, yeah. yes. That one's very challenging, but like... Yeah, it's challenging, but classic. Yeah. Like, it's so good. Um, But we did the scenario where you are infiltrating the Silver Twilight Lodge. Yes. And hilariously enough, so the, the map was all spread out and we go in one direction mm -hmm. um, away from pretty much all the catacombs and stuff. Yeah. Because we're like, well, I'm sure we'll have to go to the catacombs at some point in time. So let's right. like finish the upstairs first and then go down there. So we get all set up and we get get our get the clues and it's like, well, let's go ahead and just advance the act and we'll see what goes on. Sure. And it spawns an enemy that has like a story item. Okay. And our goal is to get the story item by either defeating him or parlaying with him a certain number of times to like get rid of him. Yeah. So we're like, oh, that's going to take like two turns of walking just to get to him. Right that's unfortunate so we're like okay well we'll finish up over here first get all the clues and victory point locations and stuff like that yeah and then we'll just make our way over there well we get all the clues and we're about to make our way over there and i draw the uh uh one of the encounter cards that was like the nearest cultist enemy moves one space at a time to your location and attacks you and ah. the, the the fighter had killed the rest of the cultists the last turn. So oh, the no. target guy was the only cultist. And so he went from the far opposite side of the map all the way to me. Ew. Attack, attacked me and that's fine. But I was like, well, you're here now, I guess. So I'll just parlay with you and advance the act since I don't have to go chase you down now. Yeah. That's a nuisance. It, it, well, it was very convenient. No, absolutely but... convenient, but also a giant nuisance so it was a really hilarious uh, way to advance the scenario that we weren't expecting yeah uh, the other thing because that's the one where you have to get the keys from people oh yeah yeah that was a pain 
Yeah, and that's like one of the ones because you randomly pull keys out of the bag, and there's like one of each symbols, and like the vault needs the elder thing, but like the inner sanctum needs the cultist. And if you go down to the inner sanctum and get the uh, key, and it's the elder thing, you have to go like all the way back upstairs, yeah, and then unlock the vault door, and then go get the and because it's all random, you don't know like you never know if you're gonna have enough to go back and forth, right. But they added a new mechanic uh, in the return to, which is how we're doing it. Where it's like if you run out of keys, you just put a like a a pl- uh, like a a number token instead of a symbol token. Yeah. Okay. And if you like at the end of the game for each key that the investigators control, that is like one of the numbers you get a like it gets added to the victory display as an extra victory point. Yeah. 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 Um, one of the enemies is like spawns and gets a key and through hilarious shenanigans, we spawned him like five times. <laughs> he just like, he just kept coming out. And so we just, and it was like, if you evade him, you, and succeed by two, you just get his key. So we just kept like stealing Talking his enough. keys and he just kept like coming out and getting more. It reminds me of that scene in scrubs. I think it was season four or five where uh, the janitor has a bag of rats Mm -hmm. and he's like put one dead rat in the middle they all start towing that line and then he realizes there's a hole in the bottom of the bag he goes jailbreak and then a few few minutes later he comes back on he's like they're smart they're organized and they've got my keys I need to watch more Scrubs. I just recently finished... Well, okay. I tried so gosh darn hard because I, like... I, w- I listened to the whole podcast where they were rewatching it. And, like, I tried so hard to watch every episode before the before I listened to the podcast. Mm-hmm. Season 9 got me, man. I, I just couldn't do it. I love each and every one of the actors in that season. I really, really do. That season is crap. Mm-hmm. It's just so bad. And the more they analyzed it, the the less I was like willing to to watch it. Also, like Taskmaster was on, and I was like, I don't feel like I'm not gonna. No, this is bad. <laughs> Go away. Go away. Scrub season nine. And then I had to start my uh, Deadpool rewatch. So mm-hmm. I've, I've also. OK, so here's the thing. He's just trying to unlock a door and you guys kept. kept, kept keys. Oh, also, sorry, remote error. I missed your comment. Uh, hopefully it'll be a good day when you remember why I bought them. I, re- I know exactly why I bought each game that I bought. Uh, I just haven't had the people to play with. Slash uh, Alex also owns several of them. So we just play his copy. Um. What was I going to say? Greg said something about trying to unlock a door and taking his keys. For a while, Doug and I were talking about getting our, our podcast back started again, Adjacent Hex. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. Like, Doug's been out of the hobby for a while. I know too much and and like th- part of the reason that we stopped talking doing the podcast about board games was i now know too much about the industry um and as a result like there's so many things oh deadpool rewatch thank you yes um there's as a result there's there's it's just very risky for me to do a podcast about it i i would probably spill the beans about something i'm not supposed to talk about and I don't want to do that. Um, but yes, Deadpool rewatch. So I am done with it. I finished it. It's done. It's it's over. I'm, I'm, I'm officially ready for Deadpool and Wolverine. Um, is that the uh, Crisis Protocol Gambit? It is. Yeah, it is. It is actually okay. MCP Gambit. Uh, as I, it is not my favorite Gambit sculpt. I there there are several that are better, uh, but I already have this one. So. We're going with it. Um, let's get some reference photo here. Uh, what well, I did, Rogue X Men '97, right? No, I did Rogue First. Well, 
There's a lot of, I did an amalgamation of rogues. So let's go Gambit. I was about to say, yeah, Rogue's first appearance was a really different costume. Yeah, it was really Stinger. strange. It was very different. Uh, X-Men. Especially if you do the first appearance from Avengers, not X-Men. Yeah, well, that's what I was looking at. Uh, I definitely I tried to make some nods to it, but... <coughs> oh, God. Because I don't think she had yellow in her original <coughs> costume. It was, like, all green. Green and white. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was, it was strange. All right, so Gambit, very purple. Uh, it looks like yes, like even yeah, purple or sure, purple or pinkish, depending on kind of who draws it. Well, let's check out his first appearance. Oh, it might help if I actually used Google and not Bing. There we go. Gambit. X-Men first appearance. Uh, Uncanny X-Men 266. Yep. <laughs> I was going to say, if anybody knows that, it's going to be you. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, this cost is was... cool. Yeah. I was so pissed about that because like, uh, I met Jim Lee uh, back in April. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and like, while he designed and created the character Gambit with Chris Claremont, that first issue was like a sub- like a different person like was the artist for that issue not jim lee so someone else actually drew his first appearance even though jim lee created the character what a night what a nuisance and like i wanted to get I, like obviously i would love to have gotten the first picture or for first appearance of gambit signed but it wasn't actually by jim lee and i was like ah that's so annoying oh my god i also changed up the music because <laughs> the Metroid Prime 3 soundtrack. Oh, hey, Dutchie. Oh, my God. Where have you been? I, I already have questions because all I know is Logan and he dies. And there's Deadpool and Wolverine. But all the time. But with all the time travel and X-Men, I guess something will come up. Yeah. Do, I, do, I have no. Like, I just kind of, in my rewatch, just watched everything. Like. Any Fox? <sighs> Yeah, pretty much every Fox movie, other than the Fantastic Four. I, you know, maybe they reference that, but I don't know. I just, I couldn't, after watching Elektra, I couldn't uh, clean Destiny since new DLC. All right. So you're still on that train, huh? Good for you, man. Good for you. Simile edition. No, I want the original copy. Eight. Whoa! What? That's crazy, man. What? Dutchie says he's eight hours away from three thousand hours in Destiny. That's absurd. That's, I. That's absurd. But also, like, props to you, man. That is really, really cool. That's dedication. Dutchie is one of the guys I used to play Destiny with uh, quite often, actually. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, thinking back about our raids, the last raid, extremely difficult. They also said it was the hardest raid they ever brought out. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it. Oh, maybe that is what I'm going to need. Oh, it's such a low-res picture, though. It's not even showing up. Okay, that's, that's, annoying. that's a nuisance. I'm sitting here trying to find reference photo, and I am coming up short. Yes. No, it's just wicked dark. Come on. There we go. Okay, now I can see what I'm doing. Verifying the device. What are you doing? Okay, there. Yes, please. Zoom in. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Oh, yes. Okay, all right. Now we're in the business. All right. Bright, flipping pink. I love it. Yep. This is going to be cool. Um, all right, so we got some paneling. Some darker purplish areas. Some like, blue boot, blue silver boots. Oh, I've got the perfect color for that. Oh, this is going to be fun. All right. Very exciting about Very excited about this one. Let's 
go rat tail pink. Yeah, that'll do. We'll highlight it brighter, most likely. So not being used to this new headset, I keep bonking my head on my camera. Oh, constantly, right? It's like I'm leaning forward to like look what I'm doing and then bonk on the document camera. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've been doing a lot of just uh, touching on, on what Dutchie was saying here. The Clan Peter Bread is is still active. We we are not playing Destiny anymore. We are playing both Helldivers and Elden Ring. Um, it's been really nice having a couple of different games to play because. Um, just, you know, satisfy whatever, uh, whatever mood we happen to be in. But I, th there is a part of us, all of us, that, that does miss the Destiny days. I was about to say, a friend of mine had just started Destiny with the new DLC, Oh god. And so he like asked me to join in and so like I ended up downloading it yesterday and playing it for the first time. For the first time, oh wow. Bungie does know their way around a great a good shooter, yeah, that's true. Yes they do. Like I started playing and like obviously like just picked it up really quickly. Like it was like Halo muscle memory just. Oh yeah, absolutely. Taking over. There's, there's a, a good amount of Halo muscle memory there. Um, yeah, Dutchie mentioned some of the raids that we we did. Uh, Garden of Salvation was just insanely hard. <laughs> like we played it so much, um, but. We never actually got through it. As a team, we never got ever, never actually got through it. I think we did eventually get through it um, with various situational uh, or uh, different different parts of the group. But yeah, it was it was it was good. Those are good times. Those are good times. Uh, I did realize, you know, at some point, the, the the thing about Destiny is like, in order to be in any to to see any semblance of success at Destiny, you kind of have to be like it. It, it, it it's got to be kind of the only game you're playing. Um, mm -hmm. so eventually, Paul and James and I were like, ah, we really want to play other games, like. Yeah. This is cool, but there are other things that are, you know, either are coming out or have come out. Oops, just lock a little bit. Uh, that, that we really like to play. So, so we we parted ways from from Dutchie, and <laughs> yeah, it yeah it did, Greg. It became a second job, and um, that was a nuisance. Uh, like that's not what we wanted. Um. So there's there's no disrespect there. There's no love lost. It's just not where we were in our lives. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I I went on to. Uh, to rediscover my love of Metroid, and that became my second job. I mean, what? No. Um, yeah, daily bounties. We're gonna make some progress on the week. You schedule a time for a nightfall, and then like raids on Saturday. Every Saturday we were raiding. It's like, oh my god. And at one point, I mean, my my wife was like, I don't see you anymore because you're always playing Destiny. I'm like, ah. Uh, Okay, that's a problem. Where, and, and then, you know, so Helldivers, like, Helldivers has been great because 
And, and, and even so has... Well, I'll get to Elden Ring in a minute, but, like... Helldivers were like, we're gonna drop in for, like, an hour or so, and we're gonna play, and then we're done. Like, there's no... There's no... It, it doesn't feel like a career. It's just... You, you do your part for democracy, and you're done. Uh, and El Elden Ring, like, also... So, Elden Ring... I stopped playing that for exactly the same reason. I was like, I was logging in every single day, trying to do the grind, like trying to be better, trying to get better. And eventually I was just like, this is, I, I can't, I can't keep up. Like I can't do this game. I love it. It's amazing, but I just can't do it. And so I stopped playing that game for the same reason. And then recently with Shadow of the Earth Tree, um, which I haven't bought yet. Uh, we started like we started more seriously examining the seamless co-op mod, which was a brilliant decision. That has just made the game so much more approachable. I'm actually using the same blue shade for his gloves that I used on uh, Red Hood. Is that um like a, a dark black with a blue shade to... It's actually a purple with a blue. Okay. Uh, and a little bit of black. But it will, uh, I'll hit it with no and oil and I'll darken it up. And then I'm also going to do, I've got the same shade, more or less the same shade with the metallic uh, for his boots and such. Indigo, yes, that's a good word for it. Thank you, Ramona. Indigo's not a real color. Go on. So, Sir Isaac Newton, as you, um, like, he, uh, figured out, like, the, the prism and separated the lights into the rainbow and other stuff like that? Yes. Um, he was also a numerologist, which is, uh, like, a person who believes that, like, numbers have some theological significance. Yes. And so, when he broke into the prism, there were, like, the six colors, red, orange, yellow, uh, green, blue, and violet. Yes. But because six is associated with evil and oh. uh, Satan. he made up another like sub color between blue and purple in order to say that there were seven which is um uh, more theologically like associated with god that's hilarious and and totally expected too like my god yeah So I guess you could say like indigo is a color. But like I mean, it is like, because it is like an ever flowing spectrum. You could have like right. an infinite number of colors right, in right, like right. the prism, but like the the basic like concept of that. Yeah. Okay, I like this color so much. I'm gonna go a little bit harder with it. But that is also kind of um, like the side note of like uh, vegetables don't exist. Right. Which I love because like uh, yeah, vegetables are, it's a culinary term, not a scientific term or Correct, classification. Yeah. So like biologically or scientifically speaking, vegetables aren't really a thing. Yeah.
I want gun metal. Where's my gun metal? There it is. Sounds like lead belcher to me. Ah! Come back here, paintbrush. Yeah, my lead belcher, like, I don't have any more, so. Yeah, I'm moving away from it. There's only a couple of a... Citadel colors that, like, I, I try to keep around anymore. Like, I still have a billion of them, but, like... Yeah, my lead belcher's empty. Yeah. I think... Um, obviously, things like uh, Nullin Oil. It's a must-have. But, you know, I, I do keep uh, Mechanica Standard Gray. And, um... A few miscellaneous things. No, oh, I need to do the Leather Brown first. So when I was looking for the, my new headset, I like asked like a half a dozen people for yeah. recommendations, and literally everyone gave me a different recommendation. That tracks. I I gotta be honest, I lucked out with Turtle Beach. Mm -hmm. uh, I ended up winning like a trivia contest. Okay. And I won. Uh, actually, they're right behind me. I, I won this pair. Um, which Not is, the one you're using. No, they're the Z22s, Air Force Z22. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they were great. They are great. I love those headphones. Um, but uh, I got fed up with, because like they, they are corded. Uh, and I got fed yeah. up with the cord running down my back. Um, especially while we were painting. I came across that when I was like looking looking at stuff I was trying to find different like wireless versus bluetooth which I, I don't think my computer is built in bluetooth i'd have to find an adapter to put in yeah I have um, to do that. and so looking at it, like everyone's recommendations and then viewing like reviews and comparisons of all kinds of different ones i ended up settling on uh some corsair h780s or something the corsair makes really good stuff you're you're yeah. you're in good hands there yeah, I, I like comparing like the comfort and overall quality and sound quality and like all the the ratings that had like the highest for most all of them. Mm -hmm. And if, like even the ones that it didn't have the highest, it was like a four point three to a four point four or something sure. like that. Yeah. So I was like, this is definitely looks like the best overall. Um, like comparing everything, especially like the price was also pretty good as well, taking that into account. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, when you asked me, I, I cracked back immediately with the, the Turtle Beach options that I that I'd sworn by for a while now. Um, but like, there are so many good headphones. There really are a lot mm -hmm. of good headphones out there. Um, and I haven't really gotten a, a big chance to use this. Um, but like this set has like Dolby Atmos surround sound. Yep. Um, so obviously like streaming and I'm just chatting with you, it's, it's not really coming into play. Um, the fact that it's also like, like most headphones, like, uh, I can use it on the PlayStation as well. Yes. So I just take the, uh, the Wi-Fi USB and just kind of bring it downstairs and can use it, but then... I tried when I was starting Destiny yesterday to use it, and it was more people just talking over voice chat, so I wasn't actually getting to, like, listen to the game. Yeah. I... So these are these are an Xbox headset. Uh, because before I lucked into my PlayStation, I was an Xbox guy. Mm -hmm. No lies there. Uh, and, to you know, to, to a Gears of War extent, I still am. But um, really, there's not a whole lot of Xbox content that I care about anymore. Um, so, aggravatingly, mine, mine will not work with my PlayStation, but... Yeah, that's, 
that's definitely a, a plus. Alright, that looks pretty good. Patch up the pink. This, I'm already loving this mini. Going after the first appearance. Look. Oh, excuse me. Bless you. So my daughter's birthday party was cat themed today. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that meant. All I did. Sorry, was did you, think, you said cat themed? Cat themed. Yes. Okay. All right. I wanted to make sure you didn't say hat themed, and I was like, okay. That wouldn't be out of the realm of question either. Uh, her Aunt Lindsay loves a good hat. That's my, my sister in law. Mm -hmm. Of course, in. in party planning mode, I had a massive anxiety attack on the, at the grocery store today. That's there were good. masses of people everywhere. I just couldn't... I, like, I was so overwhelmed I couldn't even see straight. It was bad. Hat theme party. Silly hats only, yes, exactly. And boy, do we have plenty of those in our family. My family, like, my, I, I think my mom really likes this. Like, we all go antiquing together, uh, mm -hmm. which is so much fun. Like, but I was trying to explain to... to my dad the other day, like he he was asking Tim and me, my, my brother and me, what it is about antiquing that we find fascinating. And it's, it, like, it's not the like we don't go to buy things. We go to look at people's useless tech and try and piece together who these people were or are. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's more like going to a museum than it is, and I, I said this about retro game hunting, like, it's it's more like going to a museum than it is about buying things. Mm-hmm. Learned all kinds of things. Pokemon at thrift, shop, thrift stores. I went to the thrift store today. I found a, um, Xbox One for a hundred bucks that I almost pulled the trigger on, but I already have one. And then I found an Xbox 360 for a hundred bucks. I was like, that doesn't make much sense. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Garage sale, same thing. Uh, yeah, it's like, you're, you're like, oh, that's something different. Let's learn about this person. Wow, okay, this is, this is cool. Oh, that's better. Um... Now Gambit has funky eyes, right? He has like, yes, it's black with like a pink iris. Is they're pink? Okay, I always thought they're red, but that's... I mean, it depends on who draws. Yeah, it, but yeah, yeah, naturally, yeah. Someone didn't know what they had. Yeah, well, maybe Greg, but like the fact that the Xbox One and the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty were the same price, that seemed a little screwed up to me. Also, I don't think either of those things is worth a hundred bucks. I mean, that seems like DK all these prices to me. The question is, do I do the duster first? Probably, right? Yeah, it's a big area. Um, oh, we have to get brown. Ooh, this is a cool brown. Matte brown. Oh, that's fine. Actually, let's go trench mud. Oh, that sounds. That's. That's. What do you think? Hmm? What do you think for this this for his duster? Come on, come there. Oh, 
Uh, that might be a bit dark. You think that's dark? Look, right. I have like a statue of him, like right above on the. Hut yeah, that's why I'm asking you. I'm like, uh, okay. This is this is sort of like a. Um, in fact, I think this is the analog for. Uh, oh, what's that one we love? Mordenfang. Yeah. Yeah, Morn Mornfang would be a little bit too dark, I think. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. Sorry. Oh, this one's kind of cool. It's Resistance Rust. Yeah, hey. I'd say, like, you need something between Xandry Dust and Mornfang. Some, something between Xandry Dust and Mornfang. Okay. Let's At least the uh, Citadel names for it. Yeah, no, that, that helps. That helps. I've got Steel Legion Drab. <laughs> well, I have it somewhere. Shit. This is one of those moments where magenta, can we say magenta? No, we're not painting as dust and magenta. Terrible idea. Oh, there's it. Jesus Christmas. Right in front of me. Okay, so between Xandry Dust and Mornfang, not a whole lot of... There's, there's quite a lot of... Not a lot of brown options? No, there's there's quite a lot of shades, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So, I wonder... No, that's, that's still too much. Ah! Driftwood Brown. Right here. I think that's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. That that's is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Still good. Cool. <laughs> I haven't used my Citadel paints in almost a year, and like they're. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, remote error. I forgot we were talking about Gambit's eyes for a minute. And I do have magenta. Actually, I have a really nice magenta. It's Horrific pink, and I'll add a little bit of red to it. Oh yeah, that's that's good stuff. That's that's good mix right there. You know what? I, might, I think I'm gonna add just a little dot of this resistance rust. Make it a little bit there. I help if I shut it. Now on sale, twice a month. Well, good for you. What's on sale twice a month? Uh, X-Men. Ah. I need to make a fits. When I wash this with uh, Agrax, that's gonna look dope. Yeah, good call. Because if if I were going like, you know, grim dark with this, even even as as. Uh, Early on as uh, Onslaught era, 
Mornfang would make a lot more sense. But as light as the rest of the color palette is here, I do think lightening up that, that shade is a much better call. Lightsaber. Cool. So how what's your what's your process for for lightsabers? So I got to do loops pretty soon here. So usually I will start with a dark color, um, like blue, red, or green, or whatever color it is, like a, yep. a, a very dark one, um, a, along the entire course of the blade. Okay. And then I will do like a lighter shade and layer that on just slightly, not quite all the way up to the edge of the blade. Uh, and then do lighter shade and lighter shade until like the very base of it's like white practically. Okay. Like right, right at the hilt. Oh, okay. So you're okay. All right. So like all, where it's coming out of the lightsaber is like the brightest and so it's almost just like a straight white regardless of I do lightsabers multiple ways actually um, I was actually thinking about doing something different this time to see how it would turn out fair enough so I'm gonna I'm gonna experiment some it's an easy thing to fix if I need to I think I was gonna take like a matte white to brighten it up a whole lot Mm -hmm. And then use one of my, like, for him, like, a blue metallic. Yeah. And see how, like, if the bright white underneath it with the very thin layer of blue metallic, would, like, I, I want to see how it looks. Sure. My thought process was um, start white and, like, I don't know. I sometimes I, sometimes I will do that like I will start with a very like a, a solid white and then like add the color in but yeah. usually I try and like have the most of the, like the deepest color at the edge of the lightsaber sure like the end of it to have a paint will do that, yeah. Yeah, also the problem with lightsabers 
is how I do most of my priming. I do the Zenithal priming. Yeah. Which makes no sense for essentially a mobile light source. Right. So sometimes adding in just like a flat white as bright as possible makes sense and helps it look good. up Red Hood here. Space dry brushed. Okay, we not a little. We not already done. Did, were you like letting the oh, wash dry? Yeah, I, I needed to what? Let the wash dry. And uh, just hit it with some dry brush real quick. Unfortunately, this is this is one more of those GW paints I do keep around. Is the uh, Terminata Stone dry brush paint. Realistically, I could do it with uh, just white, but this is what I've been using on all the GCC minis, so might as well keep it uh, consistent. Bright gold. I'm really happy with this mini. But something I don't say very often in the Gotham City Chronicles minis. Oh, you know what I could do? We got Necron Compound. Play. Let's play. Let's play. Love the metal interference paint on the helmet. I think that came out really cool. The highlighting was really fun on this one. He's wearing a freaking purple suit. He's not Kilgrave! I'm an idiot. I've got a drawing towel right there. Alright, Gambit, get back in. So, I was thinking of Remy's hair should be a little darker than his duster. Yes. Like, maybe a couple um, shades even. Uh, a couple shades and even possibly with a slight t a hint of red. 
heights. Oh, yeah, I can do that. It's lovely trench mud. And I can mix with a... Oh, I've got just a thing for this. Like, he's obviously not a ginger, but... Right, no, I'm going, like, red-red. This, this is a paint I've been itching to use for quite some time. It's called Capo Red. I mean, it is, it is, it is a dark red. Like a coagulated blood. So I'm just going to add a yeah. little bit to this brown. I think we'll be okay. Let's see how this, let's see how this turns out. So yeah, I'm not sure how well that's going to show up on the camera. Of the, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were... I see what you did. Yeah. Maybe a camera picture like will show... I think the too much light is just reflecting off of the metallic. Yeah. Or the color's not showing well. Silver on his belt. Uh, I went a little too hard on that. That's okay. Shake your paints, idiot. Like that. Okay, let's go. So I'm not sure if I told you, since I actually happened last weekend. Um, I was doing a. Uh, I was opening some some of the new packs for uh, Star Wars Unlimited, uh -huh. and um, I pulled a showcase Mandalorian. So to um, the way you build decks and stuff is like you pick a leader and a base. Yeah. So there are like several leaders, and um, so instead of like having standard like foils or other stuff like that, they have showcases. Mm -hmm. um, each pack will come with one leader, and I believe the stats, like each booster box comes with 24 packs. And out of every 12 booster boxes, so it's like one out of every 288 packs or something like that, uh, is like one of the leaders is a showcase, oh, at least cool. statistically. Um, and I pulled the showcase Mandal Mandalorian. I was uh, very excited. That is very cool. Not like the the. It's like beggars can't be choosers. Like it's not the character that I would like the most, but it is still really awesome to have. It's still a pretty dope character. Like it's yeah, it's Din Djarin. I mean, come on. He's yeah, like he is he is popular. Like I think the card. Like market value is like four hundred and fifty dollars. Jesus, uh, it's on eBay so certainly. Hard. Um, uh, like a month ago, um, someone at the shop, but like I, I couldn't go to the draft that day, um, and someone pulled the the showcase Hera from oh, the Rebels. What? And, I love um, her. I, I really know. do. I'm like the only one I know who actually actively runs a deck like with her as the leader. Mm -hmm. um, 
and as far as I'm aware, I haven't like looked through like every single store showdown like deck list that had like been meta or whatnot. But I got to like the top f four with yeah. her deck, and as far as I know, like I haven't seen that happen at all. Like most of the top decks have been, had been like Boba Fett and Darth Vader and like Han Solo. Hera's great. I, I, mm -hmm. And I'm not just saying that because Mary Elizabeth Winston plays her. I really, really like her character. Yes, I, I it's, did. It's about I dang like... time that a Twilight was more than just a dancer. Uh -huh. Or a major domo. That said, Mary Elizabeth Winston is a wonderful hero. Mm hmm I gotta say, I, 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 so as much as I, I did enjoy Ahsoka quite a lot. I, re I really like that show. Um... And this coming from someone who has never seen the cartoons. Mm -hmm. So that's saying something. Um, I, I I do think that Ahsoka was like the the least interesting part. Not not the least interesting part of that show, but she was definitely not the most interesting part of that show. Anytime Hera or uh, Sabine was on screen, I was way more interested than when it was just Ahsoka. Yeah. Or when um Balen Skull Ray Stevenson's character. Yes. Like he was very interesting. I really enjoyed him. He yep. was well written, well very well acted. Very um, well acted. Like they're recasting him because obviously like the character wasn't done before. Ray Stevenson passed away. Right. Which is sad, but like well, I do I want to see more of that character. Right. Yeah. You're I mean, yeah, at that point in time it's like if you write him off off screen, it's like very dissatisfying. Absolutely. So it's like they had to do something about it. And I should I should say also like nothing against Rosario Dawson she's a wonderful Ahsoka, yes, um, and she, and she's really quite just wonderful in everything she does. Uh, yeah, she's I know her a really good actress. Yeah, I I know her primarily from Sin City and Clerks, but um, yeah, not Men in Black Two. <laughs> I forgot she was in that. Uh, but. Actually, I've been on a Men in Black kick lately. Like, I, I, I love as, Men in Black. As much, yeah, me too. Uh, some of Will Smith's best work. Definitely some of Tommy Lee Jones' most interesting work, although I wouldn't say it is his best. Because he's had some pretty good movies. Mm -hmm. uh, my it was really friend. interesting with, uh, like, in that time frame, him just coming off of stuff like The Fugitive and stuff. Yeah. Like, it was a very de big departure for him, and it was very well done I, I think it really did good things for his career too I mean it, it showed that he has comedic chops he was mm -hmm. I, I don't think he was perceived as a comedic actor up until that point um, but he's I mean he's very much the straight man like he, he, you know he, he's the guy who sets up the jokes for Will Smith to knock him down the, there are some times where it's like being the straight man in a comedy is much harder than actually being the funny person yes that is exactly what I was about to say uh, yeah, he, he had a much harder job to do. And, and it also, you know, leads him to things like Space Cowboys and uh, even Captain America. Like, he was awesome in Captain America. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, his best moment was when he throws a grenade. Like, grenade! And he's just being standing there being sarcastic. Um, I think the best moment was, I'm not going to kiss you. I'm not going to. Uh, that's exactly what I was going to go to next. Yeah. I'm not kissing you. Like, wow, dude, <laughs> you're great. 
Uh, Remy Staff Metal? Yes. That's what I thought. Okay. Do I want to do... No, there we go. Okay. What is this? Someone asked me, or someone posted on Twitter this morning, uh, is there a model that you just haven't, like, you put together but you haven't touched in a long, long, long time because you know it's just going to be a giant pain? And I was like, cries mm -hmm. in Chaos War War Machines. <laughs> I've sat down to paint them so many times and just get distracted immediately. It's so tedious. But I will finish them now that uh, the old world is out and I have rules for Chaos Force again. Because at some point, Yon Magma Cannon, off to my right here, will need to take the battlefield as I have an outstanding challenge from some uh, pointed ear freaks. Chaos War Fire Glaives, Iron Demon. Chaos Warps are hilarious. They will arbitrarily bind demons into their war machines. Mm -hmm. Just for poops and giggles. I'm a dummy. Face. What'd you do? I forgot oh, to actually put wash on Quokun's face. Oh, at least whoops. the metal parts of his face. Is it? Because uh, I'm using um. Title thing? Oh yeah. Mulan oil. I should probably do that. What? <laughs> this remote error realized that I haven't changed the uh, overlay. What overlay? 
on my na or on uh, what I'm painting. Ah. Oh, it's, well, not really that long, I guess. Is that finished Red Hood? Alright, let's get some... Oh, Cajun. He's going to be tanned, isn't he? More so than not. More so than not. So let's go. Back to the old standard. I don't feel like fighting with uh, TZ Combat but skin tone when I've got Bogman's Glow. I was half the way distracted by the number of lightsaber colors and the idea of painting a metal mailbox. <laughs> I do have to say, this method is a lot more tedious. Yeah. I'm doing like, um, instead of just like coating it with wash, like I'm actually doing like the, like really aiming and putting yeah. it in exactly where I need it. That's, I've taken to doing that a lot more frequently these days. And yeah, it, it is, it is more tedious, but it does, I think it looks better. So on a whim, last Friday, i.e. a week ago yesterday, mm -hmm. I wandered into GameStop, of all places, Uh huh. which is not a place I go very frequently anymore. It, their retro game selection is not ideal. Existent? Basically non-existent. Uh, but I was like, you know what? I have a good feeling today. Turns out, uh, I think... I found a game that I'd completely forgotten even existed. Uh, weeks ago, I mentioned that I picked up Trauma Center Second Opinion on the Wii. Yep. Uh, I forgot that Trauma Center New Blood existed. Mm -hmm. uh, so I picked that up for 10 bucks. At GameStop. That was interesting. Yeah, kind of cool. I was quite literally the last customer in the door that day for the poor gentleman who was running the place. Did not have the hours posted on the sign outside, so I kind of just had to wing it. Now it would help if I could get a shelf built put my uh, errant consoles in on. I was going to buy, I bought that Ikea Calyx shelf and I was like, man, this doesn't fit. <laughs> Which is a shame. But I think I can build a better one for cheaper. 
Mm -hmm. And I think it will have to house... It might actually might be two, two layers, because I think I'm going to do... It'll certainly have the PlayStation on it. because Like, basically, the, the consoles that I use on stream regularly. Uh, no, it's so, it, like, it, it fits the room. Um, like, it, the Calyx comes out, like, to, to here. Basically, you can see the corner of my hand. That's covering too much, <laughs> basically. I want it to be, like, a foot to a foot and a half, not two feet deep. Uh... So that was, yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's get his eyes. Oh, you know, oh my god, brainwave. What's up? Max Darth. For? For his eyes, for the, the baseline for his eyes, and then the red yeah. dot. Boy, I like, I, I was, I was kind of a roll of the dice when I bought this Max Darth, but boy, has it come up clutch! Like we've used it so many times now. Yeah. Not that is a wave brain and brain, what? What? <laughs> no, that is a wave brain, not a and not a brainwave. It's Greg versus Greg versus remote error for the battle of the wave brain. Wave brain. Now you've got me doing it, Greg. You Bonzi buddy, go to bed. Wait a minute, hold on. Do I have a Bonzi buddy? Yes, I do. Oh my god. Absolutely. Yeah, let's fix this. You first. I got in. I so did I, man. And I'm still freaking exhausted. I had kids jumping off my shoulders all day yesterday, so that's uh I'm physically exhausted. Thank you. 
almost there. Oh my god, his eyes came out so good. Mm hmm. That's good. It's hard to tell from oh, the oh, camera, but. Camera focus. Ah, oh, come on. Stop color correcting, you jerk. Actually, you know what I can do? Ah. Wait a minute. I got white paper. That'll work. There you go. Mm-hmm. Looks good. Yeah. I'm, oh! Soldering iron down. Good job. Could it could be worse. In. Well, yeah, it could be worse. could have been plugged in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. Awesome. Very happy with that. Okay. Oh, what do we got? A few minutes left. Good. Cool. I'm gonna try and actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna slap down. Make up your mind. It's got to be one of the two. Carapace is... We've now entered the portion of the show where Zach gets a little bit too sarcastic. Yeah. And or snarky. Oh. Again. Now I can see what you're painting. Oh! <laughs> What? I forgot to zoom back out. Oh. Thanks, Eric. I mean, I can I can stay zoomed in, like. Certainly, our trade with the duster and his hair. Flesh shade will happen for his flesh. Is it Karasberg or is it. Yeah, it's Karasberg Crimson. Alright, well, let's, let's start, with, start with the known, the known entities here. biggest.
Has that style of gander ever been shown without his trench coat? Um, I don't know. That, that's a Sorry, what's the question? Has this style of gambit ever been shown without his trench coat? Yeah. I was going to say, I presume so. I mean, there's not much to it. Like, he's got his, uh, like, pink chest plate that kind of goes all the way around with the weird mask with the hair and face sticking out of it. Like, yeah, there's not a lot to it, but he has been shown without the trench coat. I guess it's Karisberg, right? Mm hmm. For the over the pink, it's got to be the Karisberg Crimson. Yeah. The only other option would be Drucci Violet. Uh, that's that, that's not right. That would darken it up too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is probably one of you, one of those situations where we have to highlight it back to bright, but that's that'll be okay. better. Right. I'm going to try... Not really going to matter a whole lot because I am going to bring in this uh, blue interference uh, next time. Give this uh, 
blue pieces some shine. But in the meantime, let's see how this does. I'm gonna drop down a brush size though. does darken things up quite considerably. As with most inks, you can kind of move it around a little bit. That was pretty cool. Here's another thing, uh, you know, earlier on I, I said justice for something, I don't remember what it was. Um, justice for Channing Tatum's de uh, Gambit. That never happened? It never happened, and I kind of wanted to see it. I was about to say, say what you will about X-Men Origins Wolverine as a whole, Taylor Kitsch was an Kirch. awesome Gambit. Yeah. I believe it was Christopher Lee who said uh, every actor is going to have a stinker every now and again. The, the trick is to not stink in the stinker. Mm -hmm. And he did not disappoint. He was far less uh, eloquent than you, but... Yeah, I believe that's a paraphrase. I know. I was just making making a joke. Yeah. The sentiment is uh, definitely accurate, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, doesn't matter like how bad of a movie. Like, you can still put your heart into it and... Yeah, do your best. Like, act good in it. Yes. If, if you're gonna... If you're hired, then do the job. The best of your ability is what you're given. That's why I don't hold Affleck at fault for Daredevil. It wasn't his mm -hmm. fault. He did fine. Same with Batman vs. Superman. He wasn't given much. I really like Batman v Superman. I, I know. It was very I, that's, good. I, I will defend him in that. Like I, I did not care for the movie, but he was good in it with what he was given. Oh, good lord! It's already quarter after twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to finish up this uh, inking and then. I'm just so zoned in that I did not realize it was that late. Yeah, I didn't either. All right. Wow, he's coming out good. I'm really excited about this model. Let's hope I don't screw it up. And, uh, and the finishing touches here. All right. Well, I think that's going to do it for us tonight on the show thank you all for tuning in this has been an absolute joy broody i couldn't do this without you thank you so much for being my partner in this venture uh i what is i can't find my brush caps this is delightful uh i will be back on monday with axiom verge 2 uh having fun with that 
and then again on Friday, and we'll do one more painting before I head off to Gen Con, so yeah, things are good. Um, I don't know, do you have anything else to say? I don't have anything else to say. No, that's about it. Like, hope everyone has a good week. Yeah, have a great week, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.